Now the way you look at me, it keeps me going Love it when you tell me things I not quite notice Just how much it means to me, your lips stay frozen As you stare out to the sky No, it's not a mystery, my heart's been stolen It's like I've won the lottery every time I'm with you When I feel you lie next to me, I feel at home in ways I can Define as part the sea when you look at me. I'll take what I want if I can't get what I need. Whoa, know the way you look at. Know the way you look at. Know the way you look at. Thank you once again for being here.
Yes, thank you so much for having us. It's really excited to be here. This is awesome. Tell me about some of your upcoming shows. What do you got going on? Yeah, so we play this coming Friday, a week from today, at Growlers on Hawthorne. I guess they have a new setup downstairs in the basement. It looks really cool. We're really excited about it. And then we play February 15th at Future Bar, which is, I guess, the TARDIS room, but it's rebranded. It's the Future Bar. So it's no longer bigger on the inside? I don't know. <laughs> is that a Doctor Who reference? I don't, it is. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I don't even know. It might not be Doctor Who themed anymore, which I think is kind of sad. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and that's in North Portland, right? Yeah, so that's what? It's on Killingsworth? Yes. Sounds yep. good. There uh, we go. <laughs> where's the best place for people to find out about your upcoming shows? I would say our Instagram, actually, would be the thing we post on the most. But, I mean, we're on all the social media platforms, you know, Facebook and um, Twitter, it's all just stoner control, or it's just stoner under, underscore control. So you can find us on all those all those sites and Spotify and stuff. I try and like update Spotify to put our upcoming shows and stuff on there as well. So for those who just want more of your music, where's the best spot? I would say Bandcamp. I think Bandcamp's the best way to get our music. We we get a good chunk of the money if you buy it from there or if you just want to listen to it spotify it's all up on spotify too that's good youtube it's on youtube and i think we're in a lot of the local record shops too like um we have some tapes over at green noise records which is pretty close to the future bar right um yeah yeah so we have we have tapes at green noise like you said and then we have some tapes at everyday music on sandy as well and a couple cds when you say tapes, you mean actual cassette tapes? I mean cassette tapes, yeah. yeah. So we have cassettes of our first album, and then actually the only place as of right now you can get our new one on cassette is at Green Noise or Every Day, because we don't have any. We're, we're sold out. <laughs> <laughs> when they come to a show, will you have a selection of CDs and tapes, or what's the thing to get? Yeah, so right now our merch is a little slim. We just sold our last t-shirt currently um so right now all we have is the first cassette um of our first album um we have a bunch of those on cassette then we have cds of our newest album alone in the city and we have a bunch of cds of that album but no tapes of that album and the songs you're performing tonight which albums are those from yeah so the ones we just did actually are not released yet we're hoping to record those real soon um but the ones we're gonna play we're going to play one song off our first album, and then the rest are going to be from the latest one called Alone in the City. So it's going to be mostly Alone in the City stuff. Nice. And who's the primary songwriter of the group? Um, well, I write most of the songs, but Sam contributes, you know, three or three or four here or there. And it's started to become a bit more collaborative. Like, we just kind of wrote our first song as a unit that kind of came together as jamming, and I think it's one of our best songs. We're not going to play it. Just because it's not, it's a little tricky, but well, they got to come to the live show to hear that. Right? Yeah, we do play it live yeah. sometimes. And um, Sam wrote the the kind of hook for the way you look at me, which is the first song we played. He wrote a part for that song too. Tell me a little bit what band practice is like. Um, <laughs> it depends on where we're at. It's always kind of a struggle, like uh, depending on if there's keys, so like you coordinate like how to get in. Um, we're usually more control than stoner at practice, but sometimes after, like, you know, it might lean more towards the other, you know, substances and such. Yeah, I think we're pretty, like, just down to business at practice. Yeah. It's not a lot. Because it's, like, it's pretty hard to get us all together, you know, like, on a weekly basis. So when we're there, it's kind of like we just got to run through it, you know, while we have the time together. Yeah, and the shows are the real fun. That's where you get to kind of, like, loosen up. So it's like if you do your homework, it's a lot, mm -hmm, you know, it's a lot more fun to play. We try and keep it, like... Uh, controlled in the the practice room so like when we get to the live place we can kind of be a little looser and stuff yeah we're not much of a jam band <laughs> yeah we don't do a ton of jamming which i personally like like i've played the old band i played in we would like just be jamming constantly and i would just get so bored i'm not a big <laughs> like you know jamming to like a radiohead song or something doesn't do a lot for me fortunately <laughs> more oasis for you i think that's true <laughs> actually like we do sometimes jam oasis songs because we're we're big sam and i are big oasis fans yeah. and mike has appreciation too i've, I've come to love them <laughs> he, he has to or we'd kick him out at this point <laughs> pretty much 
How do you guys share music with each other? Um, Sam and I text each other songs we're into a lot of the time. Um, Mike, that's a, like when we're done with practice and we're hanging out, we do try and be like, so what are you guys, you know, what are we into and stuff? Um, and as far as like new songs, Sam's real good about sending demos of stuff he's working on and um, like iPhone recordings and stuff, you know, that's a big way for like our own songs getting, sending them to each other. That's kind of how we do it mostly. This is a question for each of you. What's the last couple albums you've listened to? Mm. Oh, man, man, putting me on the spot. Um, off the top of my head, uh, not the most recent one, but the Jeff Rosenstock record, Worry. I was listening to that for a while. I don't know why that popped into my head, but that's like a really good one recently. Um, what do you got, Charlie? <laughs> yeah, so um, I've been listening to, I just bought so the Oasis B-Sides. I have that in my car right now, the Master Plan. I've been listening to that a lot. Then I also got, um, I've been listening to a lot of like hip hop from the 90s, like Wu-Tang Clan stuff. So right now, like Raekwon's, um, Only Built for Cuban Links and uh, Old Dirty Bastards. I don't know if I'm allowed to say yeah, you're that. Okay with that one. <laughs> yeah, so his first record is what I've been listening to a lot and I'm, I really like it. Um, I mean, the one that I listen to the most is probably We're All Gonna Die by uh, Dawes, which is my favorite band. Oh, that's right, Dawes. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's a big Dawes fan. Yeah. Dawes but, is uh, I mean, usually I pull from a catalog of older music like The Band or CCR or uh, Warren Zevon, stuff like that. Right on. Yeah. What do you guys want to play next? I think we're going to do a song called from our first album called Bum Next. All right, let's hear cool. it. Cool. Can I get like a little more out of the monitors? Thanks. Stack up for blocks, I know 
Hello again. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I guess before we get too far, we should have you actually introduce yourselves and what you're playing. Definitely. Um, I'm Charlie, Charlie Williams, and I play guitar and sing. I'm Sam Greenspan. I play a bass and I sing. I'm Michael Cathcart. I play drums and uh, all of the percussion things. We like it when he sings, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mike does a good um, don't think twice, it's all right. So yeah. maybe we'll bring that out sometime in the near future. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, speaking of singing, if you're the type to sing in the shower, in the car, what are you belting out? Mm. I sing, um, what's it called? That song by The Calling. Like, if I could, then I would. I'd go away, wherever you'll go. I sing that one a lot around the house. And I heard, um, this one's kind of lame, but I heard uh, Turn the Page by Bob Seger the other day on the drive home, and I was singing that quite a bit. <laughs> Sam, how about you? Um, I'm a big fan of Waterfalls by TLC. It's like my go-to <laughs> karaoke tune. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a good jam. <laughs> Can we hear a little bit? Uh, don't go chasing waterfalls. Listen to the rivers and the lakes that you used to. I know that you're gonna have it your way or nothing at all. But I think you're moving too. I can't go that low. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I usually don't discriminate whatever's on the radio or the iPod, uh, although I particularly love Night Moves by Bob Seger. Seeger time. <laughs> yeah, that's Ooh, a kind of stole Seeger for me. Can you actually sing some singer? No, not at all. <laughs> but I like no. singing. You're going to let Sam show you up. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll let Sam have that yeah, moment. Yeah, we'll leave it on, on Waterfall. Powerful, powerful moment. <laughs> Don't get that better than That is kind of hard to top. <laughs> okay, next fun question for you. First concert you ever went to? Okay, my first concert was Def Leppard at PGE Park. Ooh. It was a co-headliner. Um, <laughs> Brian Adams played before him, but I was there for Def Leppard. I, I'm sorry, combo. Brian Adams played with Def Leppard. Yeah, it was a it was a co-headlining bill at Pete back when it was PG Park and the Beavers played there. Um, yeah. First concert it was a. I remember not really enjoying it that much actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bummer. Um, I, this is sad. Um, my mom actually took him. My mom actually took me to my first concert, and she was a real trooper because she's not a big fan of hip hop. And it was a killer lineup for ten bucks. It was like Talib Kweli, The Roots, Slightly Stupid, and OAR. Um, and it was only ten bucks. It was back when Vibe magazine was a thing, and they had like a deal. And she took me. Yeah. That is quite a deal. Where was that at? Uh, the Verizon Theater, somewhere in L.A., or outside of L.A. Yeah. Right on. I think it's in Irvine. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mike, yeah, you know it's a real L.A., Mike. <laughs> yeah. All the real spots. Uh, my first concert was actually Ray Charles. Um, no so, yeah, I, mean, I was way too young to choose it. My folks <laughs> took me. But I, I, that's forever a badge of honor for me. <laughs> Although he was, he was pretty old, so at the point, they basically had his band come out for about an hour and play and then he sort of came out and played about 30 minutes and then left and his band filled in for the next 45 minutes. So it was a little bit of Ray Charles with a lot of his backing band. But it was him in the flesh. <laughs> That's some serious bragging rights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the thing I'm most proud of. Yeah, I think your parents are cooler than most of our parents in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my folks. <laughs> okay. Since your parents could claim for the concerts, let's ask first album you purchased yourself with your own money? I think it might have been 1459 by Sugar Ray, which is, I mean, I love that record. I think if you listen to it right now, I mean, at least the hits will hold up. Is it not floored? That one's only got Fly. Okay. I thought although, it was floored. Although Fly is a pretty amazing song. Mm -hmm. I like that song a lot, too. Yeah. Um, I think it was, uh, it might have been Abbey Road. Like paid for with my my own money. I remember like riding my bike Damn. to uh, the Everyday Music at Beaverton, and I bought Abbey Road. It was one of the times they were putting out like remasters or something, so it was probably like two thousand eight ish. I had other CDs before then, though, but I didn't pay for them. <laughs> uh, I I usually say, I mean, the one I've always thought is uh, Fushu Ming by Smash Mouth, but just after you asked that, I realized that I think it was actually. Uh, running with Scissors by Weird Al. So <laughs> I'm just going to admit that here on on TV. <laughs> it's a good album, though. 
That's what are some of the songs on that one? Oh, it's got none of the hits that I remember, but it was. It it's was got very the Jedi song, right? Maybe. My my, the Siranakin guy. It, right? Yeah. I, I'm hard pressed to remember any of the songs on it, but it it really meant something to me at that at like six years old or whatever. <laughs> nice. Wait, you said six years old. You okay, couldn't have bought that wrong. by yourself then. Yeah, I may be very wrong about that. It was probably like ten years old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the nineties are all a blur. <laughs> Blur's a good band. It's okay. Oh yeah. I wish I'd bought that one first. <laughs> <laughs> What song would you like to play next? Um, we're going to do Never Be You next. Okay. It's off our new album, kind of. Kind of new. Okay, hey, let's hear it. tune this next one's in a different tuning so very exciting tv <laughs> come out chat a little bit with your bandmates Great. while you tune thank you <laughs> i was actually watching uh the movie empire records the other day oh, oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> i haven't movie. seen it but I, I need to yeah i was actually thinking your music fits perfectly with that soundtrack yeah that's oh, yeah. that's awesome i'm glad <laughs> that, to hear that's that. an honor yeah <laughs> great movie <laughs> i was gonna say how would you categorize your music um, I honestly try and just say, I usually just say alternative rock, but I know that's super vague. So, um, we are, I'm a big fan of like music from the early nineties and stuff. So I think a lot of times people say we sound like bands like that, you know, like Bill to Spill and Dinosaur Jr. and stuff. Those are all like my favorite bands. So <laughs> yeah. I'll let you finish tuning while they answer some more questions. <laughs> I noticed you have the lovely Mo Trooper. Yeah, Mo Trooper. Um, 
I saw him and I got this shirt at the now defunct The No. Um, it was one of the last shows I had there, but it was a banger. He like packed the house and it was a great show. Yeah. Also on a local label, shout out Blake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Good Cheer Records, that's right. Which is a KPSU alum. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, Blake used to be here. <laughs> yeah, love Mo's music, super good. Super good stuff. We just played with um, him at No Fun a couple weeks back. So okay. it's a great show. I believe you also played with these guys, High Five Danger. Yeah, High Five yeah. Danger. We've known, like, one of our first shows ever, we played with High Five Danger before Sam was even in the band. Um, our second ever show at Kelly's Olympian was with High Five Danger. That's right. Um, and Castles, who we're actually playing with next Friday, too, who have a new name. But yeah, they're great guys. Ian's a real nice guy. We've played with his other band, too. Wicked Shallows, or no, that's not his band. Um, Naked Luck, band. sorry. Wicked Shallows is good, though, too. We, that was the same night. That's why I'm confusing. Yeah. But yeah, so great band. <laughs> Any other fun local bands you want to shout out? Oh, man. I mean, uh, the Moaning Lorries. Is... I hear they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, everyone should check them out. That's the same in my other band. <laughs> oh, I, will, I wanted it to be a surprise if anybody full, actually looked Full it up transparency. Later. That's also <laughs> our band. <laughs> But yeah, the Shallows are band. pretty good. <laughs> if you check them out. Cool yeah, stuff. Yeah. Katie's a great band. Like you know, like bands like the Dandy Warhols don't get enough due, or like the Thermals. You know, they you know, people should listen to them though. Yeah, you should check out the Decemberists. Yeah. They're a little band. Um, I don't think anyone's ever heard of them from here. Yeah. One band I actually would like to shout out. Um, I'm not sure if they're still technically local or not, but Shane is one of my favorite local bands. Um, I know the singer Teal is kind of out of the country right now, but when their their EP I guess is coming out in around. This in the next few months is coming out, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. That's on Good Cheer, I think. So, oh, I forgot. Um, I also want to shout out Maurice and the Stiff Sisters. They're oh, a killer, yeah. really Absolutely. fun band. They got horns, but then they got kind of like the sort of new wavy '70s kind of Elvis Costello thing going on. They're a great band. Right on. When you're looking for new music, how do you normally dig for it? Um. It's like we play shows and, or like, you know, you just go out to shows and whoever you like. I mean, I feel like most of the musicians in town are pretty approachable. And so you get to play bills with people that you like and then you get to hear the music more. And yeah. Yeah. The local stuff is kind of my favorite. I spend a lot of time with local bands, um, but also, um, gosh, I guess working at the record store, I've started working there in the past six months. Another thing, Aria's hooked up for me. I guess thanks, Aria, for setting this up. Thank you. Yeah, this is awesome. Aria's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's like been a big source, obviously, because I kind of hear stuff I haven't heard every day just working there. So that's kind of been the biggest out or, you know, way I hear new music lately. If anyone knows Aria and he recommends music to you, you should just listen to it. <laughs> he has impeccable taste. Yeah. I think that's a pretty <laughs> safe bet. Yeah. <laughs> Always a good bet. All right, I think the tuning song is done. Sounds good. Good All for right. radio. <laughs> <laughs> and the next song is? Foregone Conclusion. Here we go.
How are we doing time wise? Are we? Cool. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, great. So, so that was the the set list we had planned, but we luckily just played two nights ago, so we can pull out other songs, no problem. Such yeah. as your man. Apparently, really tight man. pop songs go fast. Oh, that's right. Um, okay, we're gonna play. You want to play? Uh, of the set list or of all the songs? Well, what we know. I mean, we could try Elevator World. I don't want to play that. <laughs> <laughs> Have a ghost? No, we haven't practiced that. Yeah, that works. We haven't done that one. everyone out yeah we have one slow song <laughs> that one <laughs> yeah my friend who came to the show was like on wednesday was like yeah like the bands i like just like don't really rock like you guys and i was like sorry that's the only type of song we have we have like one speed <laughs> yeah it's, it's a weird, weird era, era. It's, it's like, like uh like your music, like your music now is supposed, supposed to be like, like wallpaper or like kind of like, like you know yeah. background yeah. stuff which is cool. I like some of that stuff, but my favorite music is like the stuff that like you know, kind of grabs your attention, you know. Replacements. We're big replacements well, fans. So. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Westerberg's a man. It's the anniversary of when they played on um, uh, when they got banned from SNL. They they were apparently too drunk for Lauren Michaels' preference, but if you watch the video online, I, they're just a rock and band. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did he see Kanye's performance on there recently? <laughs> <laughs> I think Lauren's cool because Kanye sells the tickets, and 
other replacements, replacements but they didn't. People were tuning in for Kanye. Yeah, no one yeah. knows Paul Westerberg as, no. as well as Kanye. <laughs> no. Shifting gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your songwriting process. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. I, I, for most of my life, it's been just like playing the acoustic guitar, and usually something would come, and once like I'm interested in it, I'll just kind of work on it a lot, you know? But lately, it's kind of changed. That hasn't been very fruitful, so a lot of the times, I've just been like coming up with ideas in my head and trying to translate it to like how we would play it, kind of. I like how we do kind of have a, a sound or like what we're what we do is like you know rock songs so i want to be true to that while also kind of evolving so that's kind of what i've been trying to do with it lately does it start melody or lyrics um yeah melody definitely i never start lyrics first i try and keep it open-ended because when i try and like sit down and be like i'm gonna write about this it just is really hard for me so usually i it kind of presents itself and I realize what the song's about like a couple lines in and I'm like, okay, I get it. How do you know when a song's really done? That's the, that's a tough one. Um, I guess when it's like over two minutes for us, <laughs> it's like if it hits over two minutes, it's, a, it's good enough. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. I like, that's a big problem I've been having lately is like overriding, overthinking, you know, sometimes it's best. The simplest thing is the best and it's, I don't know. It's hard to say when something's done. Eventually, you just have to go with what you know you have and quit freaking out about it, though. Yeah, is a song ever really done? Or we yeah, just, exactly. Because like, we're done working like, on it. Like a lot of the ones we've recorded, we do a lot of different stuff with right. stuff with them now. You know, they are are always changing. We're adding new things we do live and stuff like that. Yeah, like even two years after it's written, we're playing parts. Yeah, we're like, still doing stuff a little different. So it's constant. <laughs> When do you feel like a song is ready to take to your bandmates to have them add their piece? Um, yeah, I guess when I when I have like enough to be like just have like a framework, you know, it, I I need to have like at least something to show, you know, like so like if I have like a verse or like a chorus or something, I mean it doesn't have to be much, just enough for us to kind of get an idea and then they can add their own ideas. Um, like I said, a lot, like lately, it's been a lot more. I've been bringing in more unfinished songs. In the past, they've been pretty finished when I bring them, but not so much anymore. They're more open ended, I would say. So, for your bandmates, how do you guys feel when he brings a song in? Where do you take that in the creative process? Oh, uh, I mean, I used to think a lot more about. You know, the pieces and like you know I, it's like I want to hear it a bunch of times and now I'm just like it has to hit me the first time for me to really get excited uh, maybe it's just because I'm like older and I'm getting lazier but it's like I feel like the best stuff it's like you know the first time you hear it what's good uh, I mean like sometimes when you hear it more times it gets better but more often than not the best songs are the ones it's like the first time you hear it you're like oh so like if you play something I'll be like oh man I like love that one part or like, you know, I love the whole thing and that'll be the one that we work on, I feel like. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, for my part, you know, I, Charlie or Sam will come with something of, of an idea of, an, a beat, uh, of a beat, but usually I sort of listen to the song and we'll just jam on it for a minute and I'll come up with what I'm gonna play. Um, so I think my part is a little bit different than what these guys are doing because I have to actually create the backbeat for it. Um, so usually it's just kind of what works with what he brought or what one of them brought and, uh, just work on it until I find really where the pocket is there. Yeah, Mike's really good at just kind of like, he. you don't have to tell him much. He kind of just gets it after a couple times hearing it, which is pretty nice. Thanks, man. He's pretty um, a song-oriented drummer, I'd say. You know, he tries to fit in with the song, which is good for our purposes. Yeah, I'm not much of a solo drummer, but I work really well with dudes bringing songs to me. Well, it's all because you received training from the one and only John Cougar Mellencamp, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I watched that video when I was like 12 years old. <laughs> I yeah. forget the guy's name, but the drummer put out a great video about how to be just sort of an in-the-pocket drummer and work with your, uh, with your songwriter and pretty much always just been with other songwriters. Okay. Just to clarify, you became a drummer off of a YouTube video? Oh, no. I, I became a drummer because as a young kid, I would bang on pots and pans to the point where my parents were like, this is ridiculous. We just need to give him a kit because I can't, I need to cook dinner. Uh, so they eventually bought me like this little Looney Tunes kit and it evolved from there. But uh, someone for a birthday one year gave me a, a, 
VHS tape of, I wish I remember the guy's name, but the drummer for John Cougar Mellencamp or John Mellencamp. And it was just sort of like a how-to for drummers and how to build beats and how to work, like, work your way into songs. Um, and so that was very formative. That and the movie, uh, That Thing You Do, were very formative for me <laughs> as a drummer. <laughs> very nice. How about you as a bassist? When did you pick up the bass? Uh, I only picked it up because, well, so me and Mike used to play in a two-piece, and we couldn't find a bass player, so I just played bass on all those recordings that we did. Um, and then I found that it was, it's a lot of fun just to play in other bands and not be always playing your songs. And there was a need for bassists everywhere I went. So I was like, oh, this is fun. I'll just play bass in this band, this band. And uh, yeah, it's just, um, it's a lot easier to play for me at least. But, you know, I play pretty like, you know, simple melodic stuff. So, you know, I can't play like, you know, crazy funk stuff or, you know, anything complicated. But if you just need the you know, bass to sit there while like the guitar does a bunch of cool stuff, then, you know, I'm your guy. <laughs> when did you first pick up an instrument? Oh, uh, it was like freshman year of high school. I had just moved, and I had an English teacher that had a couple of guitars um, in his room, and I didn't have any friends at lunch, and there were some kids who would like hole up there for lunch and play guitar, so I just hang out with them, and then when they felt like talking to me, they'd show me stuff, <laughs> and I kind of made friends that way, and uh, yeah, if I hadn't have gone to school there at that time, I don't know if I ever would have picked up a guitar. How about you as a guitarist? When did you first pick it up? Um, about the same time, about freshman year in high school, summer going into freshman year, um, started playing acoustic guitar. And that was, uh, I always wanted to play guitar. I, I took piano before that for a long time and always just kind of would rather have been playing guitar. So I finally just taught myself how to do it around that time. You ever compose songs on piano instead? Not so much. I, I definitely, that's something I'm looking to do moving forward just to kind of freshen up the process. Um, but yeah, I'm, all, I'm a lot stronger on guitar, even having taken piano for so long. And I, I was never that good at piano. Um, my sister was really good, but I was always kind of the, it, was, it wasn't for me. So you might talk her into being a keyboardist at some point? I'm always trying to get my sister in the band. She was actually the original bass player, and she... Uh, Sam Sam took her spot a couple years back. So, yeah. She has an open invite in the band always, if you're listening, Marley. Shout out to Marley. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, I think we have time for one more song. Great. Cool. Uh, three, 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 KPSU. Yeah, so we're Stoner Control, and you're listening to KPSU. Thank you, and let's yeah. hear that last song. Great. What's it called? Give Me Some Space. <laughs> nice. Some space, give me some space. 